This is Ashley Haynes, a complete waster. He's 35, he's never had a job, he's spent his life a child. Now though, things have got to change. He's being sent to work in jobs so brutal it'll push him to breaking point. Because for Ashley Haynes, it's time to grow up. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Throughout this series, I have confronted largely physical danger in the harshest environments on Earth to aid my progression towards manhood. Tonight's show, however, is different. It's very different indeed, for nothing I had ever seen before could have prepared me mentally for what I was to witness when I encountered Neil Smither and his team of crime scene cleaners on the streets of San Francisco. What I was party to with these men I know will leave me affected for life. This is the film of what happened, and let me warn you, it is disturbing, it is very graphic, and may just leave you more than a little troubled too. I suppose as you get older, dealing with loss, tragedy and death is inevitable, it's just part of growing up. Um, if you're a crime scene cleaner though, you're dealing with that on a daily basis, and the man who runs America's biggest cleaning operation lives right here in San Francisco. Crime Scene Cleaners Inc. The brainchild of Neil Smither. In 1996, inspired by the Mr. Wolf character in Pulp Fiction, he aimed to provide a discreet, fast service for the jobs no one else was willing to do. Suicides, homicides and accidental death are his stock in trade. Now with an average of 600 cleanups a month and with 25 full-time employees charging up to $400 an hour, crime scene cleaning is big business. Hi Neil. Hey, come on in. Hi Neil, take your shoes off. Take your shoes take off. Take my shoes off. So, what's our plan? I thought we'd look at some pictures, pop your cherry a little bit, uh, and uh, explain what you might see, and go from there. Okay, fine. Have some chip and dip. Chip and dip. Yeah. What we've got here is. Blood By way of a gentle introduction, Neil has arranged a slideshow. You see, the blood's been here a while. First of all, because it's coagulated here and separated on the left side. Um, Does it not make you feel sad watching these? No, I'm just wondering how much we charged on it. Ching! <laughs> Is that what you do when yeah, you walk yeah. into a place? Do you not think, thinking. oh my god, the horror that must have been this room. I can just strip that. Ching! I can strip that in an hour. Have you not walked into a scene and your eyes have just got, oh, oh god, yeah, that for sure. Disgusting. No, not disgusting. Like, oh fuck, I'm gonna be here all night. Alright. You know. Disgusting yeah. is dollars. We want disgusting. It's my first day on the job. I'm meeting Neil later for lunch, but first he's arranged for me to clean out a urine-soaked police car. That's a lot of piss, isn't it? After the gore fest of last night, this wasn't exactly what I'd expected to be doing as a crime scene cleaner. I know Neil's breaking me in gently, but over lunch he was determined to take things up a notch or two. I've been on suicides where it's just everywhere, and I'm, I've been there four or five hours by now, and I still have five more hours to go, and all you really want to do is curl up into a fetal ball and, you know, quit. But you, well, you were about to say cry then. Do you ever feel like you Well, I, I didn't say cry because I really, it would be crying not out of any sense of, you know, caring for the individual and be crying because, oh my God, I still have five hours to scrub this shit off the walls, you know. I don't believe you. You're not immune to feelings and you know that people have been hurt and tragedies have been caused, you know. Shit happens. Mm -hmm. You know, good. Here's my card. The next morning I'm sent on another job with crime scene cleaner Doug Brown. I feel an immediate sense of foreboding. Yeah, let's just go in here. Although Doug has been working for Neil for only a few months, he's already a veteran of over a hundred cleanups. Mm. 
Jesus. As we can see here, a lot needs to be done. And this is gruesome. Uh, and it stinks as well. Do we know what happened here, Doug, or not? Oh, all I know it was the uh, stabbing. So, right. as far as the details, I really couldn't tell you. And was this a murder? What's that? Was this a murder? Yes, it was. Right. I mean, obviously, you're kind of used to this, aren't you? So, does that not... I mean, oh, this is nothing. This is nothing. From what I've seen, yeah. Right. Nothing at all. Excuse me. Anything else, Doug? Um, we're looking at maybe a four, four and a half hour job. I mean, the whole room's going to have to be gutted. The bathroom door is totally off. The bathroom basically is, you know, it's a bloodbath. All right, man. All right, bye. Okay. Let's go and back it up just throw it away. Welcome, 111, your room number. Bloodstained. Wow. That is a shitload of blood there. Yeah. Do you ever kind of find yourself playing detective and thinking about what might have happened? I just come here and clean, do my job, and you know. Yeah. Oh, this is just it's rough, isn't it? It's not really that bad. Oh, God. What you're feeling is normal. You do have to have a strong stomach, but you also have to learn how to disassociate yourself. Yeah. You know, don't even think about, you know, what happened. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times you'll be able to just come in here, get the job done, and leave. Yeah. <coughs> oh, God. I... Okay. <coughs> Go ahead and have a seat on the bed. Oh. <coughs> 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 just really disgusting. Oh fuck, I feel really horrible. Ooh, ooh, fuck. I force myself to get back in the room with Doug, even though every ounce of me is telling me to leave. Oh god. This looks like a scene from a slasher flick, but there's nothing fake here. This is simply the brutal, grim reality of life and death in America. I'm just going to have to confront this nightmarish scene, but I can't seem to disassociate myself like Doug can. The thoughts keep crowding back of what has gone on in here. There's a tangible sense of the violence that led to this, and I can't help but feel it closing in on me, that this is the blood of a person, and that person's life has ended horribly and violently. It's just like a scene of desperation here. It's just like bad things happened here. It isn't the physical aspects of this job that are hard. I just cannot escape the reality of what has gone on here, that we're literally wiping out the last evidence of someone's existence and consigning it to the trash. I was struggling. How Neil and his men could look at such a scene with complete objectivity was beyond me. And as I was later to find out, even when it came to suicide, to them it would always remain a cold, mean business. Have you got no empathy? No, I have none. I don't, I don't give a fuck about this woman. There, this is nothing to me. Nothing. 